they began this absolutely spoiled by the Federal Reserve. The Fed has been spoiling financial markets since the depths of the financial crisis. The Fed talks, markets move up, that's been great. Now I will say markets are exhausted. <laughs> They're exhausted that the Fed has decided there's a new set of benchmarks, there's a new framework. Before it was forward guidance, now before it was once the unemployment rate is at six and a half percent, we're gonna get going and raise rates. Now it's five and a half or five. So markets are exhausted by all this. Uh, although I, I, will, I will give the Fed a little bit of leeway on that. When the data changes, you have to change your opinion on some of these things. And we knew at some point they were going to have to wean us off this forward guidance, that they weren't going to be telling us as much stuff, and that it would become more opaque as we got closer to they a They keep rate moving range. the goalposts. It was six and a half, then it was six, then it was five and a half. They, they said they never set up the goalposts Because the, mar the market, uh, the economy never gets above 2%. So, you know, the, because of all the stuff going on, it never gets above 2%. So now we're all the way down. Oh, we may, maybe it'll be four and a half half percent when they start raising so rates. I fear as though markets have come to the conclusion to a conclusion that Janet and her colleagues at the Fed won't like which is after the taper tantrum Feet of markets clay. got uncomfortable and the Fed said oh we're not gonna rush right. then we've had the dollar tantrum right. not gonna and all of a sudden the Federal Reserve says well don't worry what we said last time isn't quite true again so markets think they have her number what and if, markets think that they're gonna clay. be able to control these things and let markets go up this is a very dangerous development what about the argument that inflation isn't moving fast enough, high enough, which is absolutely within the Fed's mandate. So I don't buy it. So the truth is by inflation measures, including the measures created and controlled by the Federal Reserve, inflation is around one and a half percent core. We're supposed to not look at energy prices when they go up or go down. What's the difference to the economy if inflation were at 2% versus one and a half percent to the real economy? But what if directionally was going the much. wrong way? So there's just very little evidence to support that. We've had this incredible supply shock from energy and commodity prices, and core inflation has been quite stable. In fact, what we've seen in the last couple of months is wages that are starting to move up. So at the first moment that people in the real economy are getting some benefit, after seven or eight years of folks in the real economy getting nothing, now's the time we're gonna pull out the rug from under them? I don't think so. So the reality is inflation is not a problem. QE was designed in part to deal with deflationary issues. Right. QE was designed as an emergency policy in a state of emergency. We shouldn't use emergency policies when things are okay. Yeah, Feldstein makes that, that point too, just that Really, at one, and, you're not at two. You're at one and a half percent inflation. You're really gonna stoke the fire because you're a half a point below two. It's that important to get to two. Two is such a great, it's an arbitrary number they just made up. I mean, if if down the road we ever worry about inflation again, should you really be stoking it at five and a half percent unemployment? So in the old days, by which I mean seven or eight years ago, we talked about inflation being in a comfort zone, and the comfort zone was broadly interpreted to be one to between two. one to two percent. Yeah. That's where we are. If you want to do QE, you need to make a better case that inflation needs to be up three or four tenths of one percent as we measure it. Our gauges aren't even that good. Right. Uh, although the, those who are arguing for the Fed to remain patient and, and still hold off for a while cite things like what's happening around the globe with other central banks that are now in this massive easing process. The dollar has gotten so strong so quickly that if the Fed steps in, it's going to potentially make things much worse for our exporters. And that in itself could put us into uh, some sort of a, a deep economic recession. Right, Becky. You know the irony of this. The Federal Reserve has been telling our counterparts around the world since 2010, do what we've been doing. Right. Try QE. It would have been better if they were doing it at the same time we were doing it. As it is, it looks like it's a currency war. Now they have decided to do it, and we should somehow be surprised that the dollar is strengthening and their currencies are all weakening when they're following our prescription. Mm -hmm. The reality is we had an agreement between the Treasury and the Federal Reserve going on around 30 years. At the Federal Reserve, we don't talk about the dollar, and at the Treasury, they don't talk about interest rates. Well, I must say I'm a bit surprised. In the last couple of weeks, the Federal Reserve has started to talk quite explicitly about the dollar. That tells me they must be more concerned, and that tells me that they're as concerned about what that means for earnings as you suggest. Again, what I don't like are policies that are being changed based on what's happening on our ticker machine. The Federal Reserve should be focused on what's happening three or four years out, not whether the data from February looked a little soft or a little strong. Again, as Joe says, we've been running an economy that's grown very steadily at 2% economic growth, and we shouldn't be changing our sentiments based on the but temperature outside the, outside the door. And, and the key question I always have for, uh, for, for people that are worried about what the Fed has, has done 
is whether we've already felt the negative effects of the misallocation of assets. Because when you price things, you know, w when you decide where prices should be in instead of letting them go where they should be, you got the misallocation of, of asset. Is this why we've only gotten 2 percent? We've already felt the effects? Or is some big horrible thing looming in the future? Because most people that wanted the Fed to stay low say, look, we're, all the doomsday are said inflation, it hasn't happened. There have been no negative consequences. It's a free lunch. Everything's great. They all say they've already won, the Krugmans, everybody else, that, that we've stayed at zero. So you ask people in the real economy if they've won. The Fed talks about the great successes of QE, and people in the real economy who don't have big balance sheets, they've been suffering under huge wage pressures. The economy's advancement hasn't changed in six years. What do we see? What do we mean by the misallocations of capital? What it means is we have not had actual investment in property, plant, and equipment. What it means is corporate profits appear to have peaked and are going down. What it means is you're stuck in what the Federal Reserve now seems to believe is secular stagnation. They have all fallen into the secular stagnation trap, somehow suggesting that uh, the economy can't do more than this. What I would argue, Joe, is we've pursued these policies which are stagnating. The underlying economic results are poor, and too many in the secular stagnation crowd say, oh, it was inevitable. That's Jim it Grant. Wasn't yeah. inevitable. Jim Grant always says you can make things, the Fed can make things appear better, but they can't really make things better. And none of the, what you're talking about, none of the underlying plant and equipment investment, the things that actually add to underlying and, economic and, growth. And people not can't there. see what didn't happen. Right. That's right, the, the problem, right? It's, right. It's, 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 it's invisible to them. So right. it's really hard to argue against that. Right. What's not invisible, the front page of the Financial Times today says another great quarter for M&A. M&A volumes are up 21 percent. It's a terrific year. Well, again, you see investment that's either going to share buybacks or to financial engineering to try to find some top line investment. Or you companies staying in business far longer than they ever should have been because they can roll over debt and keep rolling it over and never fail when they should have. That's right. We have negative real interest rates. We've done this twice in our history before. From 1974 to 1976, we had a persistent level of negative real rates driving misallocations of capital. That experiment didn't turn out too well. In 2002 to 2004, we had negative real interest rates for a persistent period. That didn't turn out too well. Will it turn out well this time? None of us know. None of us can be all gloom or all doom about this. But I would suggest this is an experiment that we should be taking with great care and great modesty without some obvious conviction that there's no financial stability Have you been risks. surprised it's last this, lasted this long? Um, I'm not terribly surprised that markets continue to want to drink the Kool-Aid. I am not surprised that investors think that good times can happen forever. Well, we nuclear saw going into the crisis great yeah. complacency in markets, and we're seeing it again. A nuclear oblivion will probably wipe us out before this comes home to roost anyway. So we <laughs> just found out from Richard Hobbs. Don't worry so about it. What's the order? Let's see, nuclear oblivion, then this comes home, then, then global, global warming. Then global warming. Right. So something's going to get us one way or another. Although um, you don't see any of these risks in financial markets, and I can't right. help but think that very aggressive central banks aren't part of that we got to talk about the bond market and the lack of liquidity coming up because that's